Hi, my name's Kim Rajapan. I'm a consultant cardiologist and electrophysiologist from Oxford. We're known as EPs for short. And it's my pleasure to be speaking to Pam. My name is Pam Birchinger, and I was diagnosed with SVP, SVT in 2005. Um, I just had really, really, really fast heartbeat, very frightening. I was put on beta blockers, which were absolute disaster. Um, it made me feel like a zombie. I walked around, couldn't get up the stairs, horrible, horrible. But it didn't last very long. And 10 years later, after my husband was diagnosed with cancer, the stress of everything brought it all back again. Right. So I was then diagnosed with atrial fibrillation and have had two cardioversions and two ablations. The cardioversions didn't work, just heard all about that. Um, and the first ablation um, didn't work either, but the second one did. And that's now coming up to nearly four years. That's great. And yes. Yeah, that's really good news. Yes. I mean, in, in that sort of really nice little potted summary of your history, <laughs> you've highlighted a number of features of management of atrial fibrillation. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. first of all, making the diagnosis, which mm. is quite a challenge in mm -hmm, some people. Mm -hmm, it mm -hmm. took some years, does it sound like, yeah, to get to the diagnosis? Definitely. And um, presumably yeah. you wore some monitoring to try I did, and I did. get that diagnosis. Absolutely. 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 And then you mentioned the medication you used. Yes, yeah, Sotitol. Sotitol, excellent. Oh. The beta blocker, yes, yes. Absolutely. Did you try any other tablets as well? Um, yes, I did. And, and I can't re recall the name of it now, but no, not very good. Not very but good. I am on Rivaroxaban now. I was on amiodarone for, for almost a year which was awful. Yeah. I didn't really have any side effects, but we were going to Greece at the time. I had to stay out of the sun and couldn't drink well, alcohol. That was really not tough. Much of a holiday. <laughs> not much of a holiday. But again, a really <clears throat> important point you make there, which is one that we're going to be discussing today, mm. which is who initiates these medications. So mm -hmm. myself as a specialist in the mm -hmm. hospital, mm -hmm. I will certainly initiate some of those. But can you remember who initiated yeah, your Rivaroxaban? It was Dr. Khan. It was your specialist. It did, was. Did your GP give you any medication at any point? No. Not that point, no. no Some no. seem to be more comfortable yeah. with it and yeah. others aren't. Yeah. Okay, that's useful. Yeah. And yeah. then moving on to your cardioversion. Yes. That's another form of treatment for yes. atrial fibrillation. Yes. It, Tell it, me a little bit about your well, experience the with the first cardioversion. Exp the first time, um, it was very unpleasant. Well, the second time was even worse because I actually... Um, well, I felt the shock, and I was right. sedated. Right. And um, they couldn't get me under enough, so they gave me extra, and then gave me adrenaline to get me back. And I, I have I had a panic attack, and I was actually quite ill. Bless you. So it, 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 yes. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> so I didn't really have great time. And then some months passed, and, and my car, um, my cardiologist suggested that I started on the ablation. It lasted a few months and then went downhill, but the last one was great success. That's very good. And in terms of the cardioversion, I think you give, again, a nice description of the fact that the cardioversion is simply a reset of the heart, mm -hmm, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It doesn't treat the underlying problem. And even if it does work, mm. sometimes it will only work for a relatively short period of yes, time. Yes. And then the next natural but step. But I didn't know that at the time. All oh, right, yes. I didn't really know anything much. Yes, yes. And that's <laughs> important, isn't it? Education Definitely. here is really important, which is why we're all here yes. and hopefully helping educate other Definitely. people. Um, yes. In terms of the ablations, yes. So two ablations. Yes. I, I assume you were, I'm sure, told that it doesn't always work first no. time. But my, my cardiologist, Dr. Khan, said to me, um, well, you know, you're a certain age now, and in about five years, it'll come back again. That was really encouraging, not. <laughs> but then ablation is, that's the nature of ablation, as, a, yes. as you really highlighted, which is, it doesn't necessarily work for everyone. Mm. It can work for some people first time mm. and be a potential curative procedure. Yes, yes. And as you quite rightly say, in some people, they might have it once, then yes. it comes back, do it twice, it yes. comes back again after several years. But it's not great to have too many. He did say that to me. Important. And do you feel your quality of life has improved as a result of having the ablation? Definitely. Oh, there's no doubt about it. Yes, absolutely. No doubt about it. You know, I've got more energy. Um, I go to, as, to the gym two or three times a week. You know, I have quite a um, it's not just stressful. I do voluntary work. I work with people living with dementia and I run workshops for them, um, musical workshops, and I also run a cafe. And, you know, it's, it's quite a responsibility because I coordinate. 
And um, it's, uh, it gives me a lot of joy to do that. So I think that helps as well. Yeah, it's you know. difficult to do that when you're in age fibrillation. Oh, I, I, well, I couldn't actually. I, I couldn't do that. I was not happy. No, so yeah. it's really a, a major symptomatic benefit yes, from having the ablation. definitely. And you mentioned, Pam, that you're still on the Revoroxaban. I am. I think that'll be for life, won't it? Correct, yes. Yeah. And I think that some people come into the ablation thinking that if it's successful, they might come off their Revoroxaban or anticoagulants. I don't really think about it. I just hope that it doesn't have, you know, sort of adverse effects in the future. I yes. don't think it does, but... No, no, no. I think they're, they're very safe long-term. There's a lot yeah. of data to support that. And yeah. indeed, as you quite rightly say, quite a lot of people, even after a, a successful AF ablation, yeah. will end up remaining on their anticoagulants. Yes. It, yeah, so that's an important message to send out to people yeah. who think about having an ablation. It's really for the symptoms Definitely. Mainly, yes. the anticoagulant is there to protect them yes. from their risk of yes. stroke. So, you know, I'm living a normal life. I suppose, you know, as you get older, you do get a little more tired and, you know, you tend to want to do more, but your body's saying, hang on. So I'm not looking forward to in my mid-70s because if that's going to come back again, so I'm trying not to think about it. No, I but really you, am not. you did mention actually lifestyle there as yeah, well. And yeah, yeah. I think it oh, sounds I'm, like being active fit. and yes, fit. Yes. We know that that definitely has a beneficial effect in yeah. terms of reducing the chance of you getting atrial fibrillation yeah. back again. Oh, that's good. Yeah, absolutely oh, proven. Good. Some nice studies Excellent. showing that. So you're yeah. doing a great job and Excellent. I'm sure we'll see plenty of years of AF-free, healthy lifestyle. And coming you. to these meetings, because I went to one in London in March, and now to this one. It's very interesting. The speakers are very, very... I mean, it's a bit frightening, actually. I think it's quite frightening seeing and hearing about it all. But hopefully you know, informative. Oh, extremely informative. Yeah. Very, yeah. very definitely. And, and I will continue coming, yes. And empowering, I'd like to think. Is that a, does it give you some ideas to what you might go away and do yourself to try and keep everything nice and stable? Well, I think I am already. You am are. I not? Yeah. Sounds like you're doing all the right things. <laughs> so, yeah, um, yeah I think it's, you know, thank you very much for thank speaking you. to me. As, as an EP, I think we always learn an awful lot from all of our patients. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's been a real pleasure to meet you. Thank and you very much. And you too. Thank, thank you, Kim. Thanks so much. Okay. I'm absolutely amazed at how many people do have AF. That is, a, is an incredible, you know, you, you, you're never the only one. Of course you're not. So, you know, spread the word. And I think that, that will improve a lot of people's minds or, or not improve, but um, teach a lot of people. And, and people will learn more and more about it. It's, it's um, excellent. And the speakers, you know, are first class, no doubt about it. I think Pam's <laughs> put it excellently, actually. I think the <clears throat> real importance of Patients' Day is that it's actually unique in the calendar. There aren't any other congresses that I'm aware of worldwide that have a dedicated Patients' Day that runs alongside a scientific congress with healthcare professionals. And it gives us all a chance to learn from each other. So hopefully we can impart some useful information to patients and we can also gain very useful feedback and information from patients as well, which we do on a daily basis. So mm -hmm. Patients Day serves an, a really important role. It only works because patients like Pam come and take part and we're very grateful to them. Mm -hmm. We're obviously grateful to all the speakers who give up their time as well. But I think, I hope it will remain a long-standing tradition and thank you for all of your help with it. Oh, thank you. Yeah.